with you folks today. Um, I don't live very far. It doesn't take an airplane to come. I live just in southern Orange County, so I left my house at 1 to get here by 4 due <laughs> to the rain, and I only had to plane a couple times. But it was, it was a beautiful drive anyway, and um, I'm glad to be here with you tonight. I want to tell you you're with the right company at the right time. There is no better place than the Mulhern family of offices, and with the leadership that you've got, with Dennis, with the family, with Victor here, with the Rethink, you are light years ahead of the other companies within our system. In fact, you're the first company in California with Berkshire Health and Home Services to have a, cor a company Rethink group, and there are not many across the country yet. And I don't think it's duplicatable the way Victor and your company have done it for you. Yeah. And I've been to a couple of your meetings, and you got, I wish when I was 28 and started in real estate, I'd have had a rethink, because I would have been embracing it, and I would have picked up little sharp ideas. And the, the challenge you have with each other to, to make it happen is great, and to have a panel of agents to, to share their wisdom and their secrets with you, which aren't secrets, because they're gonna share it, is awesome. So without further ado, Let's turn the meeting back over to Victor, and thank you, Victor. Thanks a lot. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we do have a pretty packed program for you today. We're going to move things along for those uh, Rethink members who've been with us now and the ones in the past, because this is our fourth year. This is our fourth time doing this top agent event, and every year it just gets better. So thank you for attending today. We're going to start off with a regularly scheduled program, then we'll get into your top agent panel. First thing I would like to do is I would like to welcome all of you to the Norwalk branch. Okay, so thank you, Fred. Thank you, Beth. Where are they at back there? Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Beth. Let's look in here. Thank you. They don't have to allow us to use this room, but of course, they're part of the Mulhern family. They do. They have put out some nice snacks and food for you, all of you. Please enjoy. Um, one of the key portions of the local chapter, Rethink Local Chapter, is being able to visit many of the offices. You know, I'm sure when you were recruited into the company, they told you, hey, we have you know, 20 plus offices and you'll get, you know, you're not going to get 20 plus keys, but you'll have the opportunity to use the other offices. And what does that do for you as agents? It expands your market territory. If an agent says to you, I can't, you know, work with you because you are in the Inland Empire and I'm looking to purchase in Huntington Beach, well, guess what? You're going to go visit Sandy and Joe Chicarella, right? And you're going to use that office. If they're over at Bixby Knowles and they say, you know what, you're in Long Beach. You know, we're buying in the foothills, Glendora, San Dimas, Laverne. You're going to go visit Ruth's office in Glendora. And that helps you as agents expand your market territory, capturing and keeping more clients. So now you know where the Norwalk office is if you haven't been here before. If you have a client who's looking in the area and they say, you're not in our region, say, yeah, I am. I have an office right here in Norwalk or Downey or Bellflower or Cerritos and all over, right? So. Um, now you know where it's at. If you uh, need to use the restrooms, just to let you know, through that hallway to the left-hand side. Please put your phones on silent, so this way when the top agents are up here sharing their secrets, you will not interrupt their thought process. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, good, good. So, uh, again, welcome to Norwalk. And we're going to couple, we're going to handle a couple of... Uh, uh, housekeeping projects for the Rethink group. Uh, one of the first things that we do is we have a Rethink Torch project. Um, who's on social media? Yeah? How about who's not on social media? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Okay, well, maybe we should pass the, the Rethink Torch project off to Elaine. So we can use our profiles as a testing ground to get better. Right, okay. Well, I mean, like, has social media, does that count? <laughs> well, our Torch project is about uh, agents taking over our social media platforms so you can share with the rest of the local chapters across the country and all of the agents who are following our profiles to show them what the day in the life of a real estate agent looks like. And for the past month and a half, we've actually had one of our panelists here who is stellar with social media, Mr. Dusty Miller. He took over the Torch Project, and here's just a couple of his uh, best posts. So uh, there we are. We're, we're bowling at the Lucky Strike with the Rethink Group for our quarterly event in October. Here's Dusty right here picking up an award. No wonder why he's on the panel today, right? 
Back over here when we had uh, Ken Massau from OC Tax Leads talking about incorporation and tax benefits for real estate agents, trying to keep more of your commissions in your pocket, right? And so we were there for that. And then uh, this is from this past week, right, Dusty? When you and your team are cold calling in uh, Property Cousin headquarters, right? Thank you very much for doing all this. He's garnered hundreds of likes. We hope that you guys are following our real estate platforms on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, we even have a Snapchat that's not used too often, but we do have it. And uh, I'm really hoping that Elaine takes us up on this. We want to see the day in the life of Okay. Yeah, I, I have a LinkedIn. I have a Facebook, but I just don't use it. Like These are platforms. I'll give it to you. Okay. okay? Isn't I'll that going to be interesting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Leo. Nice to see you. So, up next, we usually use the crowd. Who, who are we going to call on to do this? Anybody? <laughs> Volunteers? She got her head down now. <laughs> who would like to take over the Instagram torch for us? You like to take over the Instagram torch? Wonderful. Before the meeting is over, I'll get with you. We'll get you all the passwords, okay? What's your name is? She, I, I caught you at the wrong time. She's munching on some appetizers. So I'm going to kill about 30 seconds while she's swallowing that. Okay? <laughs> so um, our torch project is going to be taken over for the month of February by... Marisha Morris. Marisha Morris, out of which office? Hacienda Heights. Hacienda Heights, okay. Vivian and Dennis, right? Yes. All right, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you. So, uh, I'll get with you today about that. Don't leave, because I will find you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, next up, you know, we kind of bring some of the, uh, the up, you know, the up-to-date news for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services through Rethink. I think, I think, in Rethink, I think, I believe a lot of you in our group, as members have found out so many things about the uh, home services network and all the tools they're adding and the things that are happening first here is that correct because we have an inside track with HSF and we get some cool info who who has friends in Italy does anybody have friends in Italy a couple the couple have friends Doris you have friends in Italy yes okay you have two friends yes are they in, are they in the north kind of around there the fashionistas I don't know exactly where, but he came over and uh, stayed over our house, and then he went back. I don't know exactly where in there, but I have to Stay in contact with him because Berkshire Hathaway Home Services is opening up the Milan, Italy office late February 2019. Our international expansion is continuing. First was Berlin, then was London, then we had Dubai, now we have Milan. And maybe Claudia will tell us where the next couple of ones are coming before sales convention, huh? Any inside track, Claudia? Well, they're in the final stages of signing, so I get shocked I said anything. Oh. Well, she'll whisper and then I'll leak it because they're not going to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But we do have an office opening up in Milan, Italy. Um, if, if you have some friends or family, or you <laughs> would like to make some friends or family in Italy, it's a wonderful opportunity to network and expand your marketplace. Um, same thing with Berlin, same thing with Dubai, same thing with uh, London as well. Um, I hear, I don't know if this is confirmed or not, but I hear Mexico City, I hear Hong Kong, I hear uh, Madrid possibly, you know, a couple of other places they're talking about, but maybe we'll find out a little bit more at sales convention. Maybe. Oh, for sure. Maybe. Now, if you haven't heard about this, for you managers in the, off, in the room right now, there's an article from Business Wire, of course. I think this is important to spread out because can you get referral money from Italy? Sure. Can you get referral money from Germany? Sure. England, the UK? Absolutely. So please take advantage of this. And speaking of sales convention, it is right around the corner. Right around the corner. Regular plan registration for uh, sales convention. It's $569 if you haven't bought your ticket yet. That promotion ends on February 12th. And if you buy on February 13th, 14th, or 15th, they're <laughs> gonna pay full price, 600 bucks. At the door, it's 650. So, if you haven't made up your mind yet, Las Vegas, Caesar's Palace, March 10th through 12th, keynote speakers, free food, free cocktails, and a private concert with Miss Gwest Stefani. How awesome is that, right? Yeah, BS Real Estate down the street, Bob Smith. He's not doing that stuff, okay? So, uh, if you haven't bought your ticket, please do. Who's going to sales convention this year? How about the paid rethink members? Are they going, who's going to sales convention this year? Okay, for those of you who are in our group, if you're going to sales convention, there's a private rethink event party. It's free food, 
free drinks, mixing with all of the other paid local chapter members across the country, and I'm going to have bracelets for every single Rethink member who's paid up to date, who's going. So, if you would like to go to Vegas and you'd like to join the Rethink private event, membership forms are in the back on that table over by Dusty, Kathy, and everybody else near the entrance, okay? Any questions on the private event or the uh, sales convention? Is it like backstage with Quinn? Is it backstage with Quinn? <laughs> well, I don't know if Elaine is going to allow you to do that, Jerry. I don't know. She might put up a little fight. She'll be there. Okay. She'll be there. Okay. Well, here. Here, honey. Hold the camera. I don't know that that's the case, but I do know that um, if we are one of the brokerage houses, one of the franchises, who actually is in the top 10 for donations to the Sunshine Kids, you do get to mix and mingle with some people as a meet and greet, I believe. Okay, but don't hold me to that. Okay, so we'll talk to Doris about how many how many dollars and cents we donated to the Sunshine Kids. <laughs> but so that's that. Uh, some more news. I'm sure you've heard about this, and it was all over uh, social media this past week. Berkshire Hathaway Property and Casualty Insurance. Fortune's 2019 world's most admired companies. We moved up one spot. Yeah. Last year we were number four. This year, number three. That is something to brag about. It's a conversation starter. Okay. It's if, if somebody says, "Who is Berkshire Hathaway?" You're either saying, "Do you know who Warren Buffett is?" or you're saying, uh, "Yeah, Fortune's most admired companies." On top of Disney, on top of Starbucks. Microsoft. You know who this is? Google. Mm -hmm. On top of Google. On top of Netflix. On top of J.P. Morgan Chase. What other real estate companies in the top ten? None. Right, Claudia? Not a single one. Is there a way to talk about this? There's articles out there. If you like this entire this slide, I'll post it on the Rethink member group. Okay. But for the rest of you who are not members, take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even come up clear. <laughs> All right, so let's try that one more time. <laughs> Here's Matterport. So you, you can see it's going to basically walk you through the house. It'll do a, a pan over each different scan point. At any point, they can pause, they can sit, they can look in any direction of the room. <clears throat> As you can see, it's just on a it's on a guided tour right now. We missed the first half because the screen went out, but it's just showing you guys. It'll follow all the way through. Along with this comes photos for your uh, for your listing on the MLS as well. So please keep this in mind on your next listing. It's not only to help you market the listing you have; it's also a tool to help you get more listings and to get more clients. What's the cost of something like this, Brandon? Uh, the cut we so. The way we have it done is it's uh, up to 1,000 square feet, it's $200. For up to 2,000 square feet, it's $200. And up to 4,000, it's 300 Anything over that, we just do it on a case-by-case -case basis. But it's, we don't yeah, yeah, get prices. Very reasonable. Yeah. Stage that place. <laughs> Does it provide the actual uh, sketch of the property? Yes. Oh. Okay. Square footage? Dimensions? It does, it does. So you click on here, go to dollhouse, right? Yeah, if you click on the dollhouse, it'll yeah, dollhouse pull back and you can kind of see. You can scan all, you can, yeah, you can move all the way around 360. Um, it depends on the type, on the size of the house, but roughly 20 to 30. MLS ready pictures? MLS ready pictures. And we do take a camera. This, this doesn't do outside, but we do take a camera and provide a curb shot and shots in the backyard as well. <laughs> if it's vacant, can you add picture um, add furniture? We can, but not on the 3D tour. We can add, we can do virtual staging into photos, and we can do that through the photos we grab from the tour. But we can't actually get them in the tour right now. They, Matterport is about to release some updates and software that will give us that capability, but it's unfortunately not available yet. Thank you. No, not problem. And do you do aerial shots of the lot? Um, as of right now, we don't, but my man right here does. You might want to talk to him. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> so, any other questions I can answer for you guys? Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
go ahead and get our lights back on. If you guys have a light switch back there, please hit that switch for us. We're going to go into our program now. Um, oh, we got one more thing here. Sorry about that. All right, so any questions? If you don't have a flyer yet, there's flyers about the Matterport back there on that table over there. Uh, give Brandon and the crew a shot. Uh, next thing, you guys also have a flyer on your seat and also back there along the wall there. Um, all of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services California Properties agents now have a free trial at the Plan Partner. If you haven't heard about the Plan Partner, it's been something that we've actually been developing here within Rethink for our Rethink members to help them do a better job of uh, building their business plan, choosing your lead generation activities, scheduling your work week, syncing it up with your digital calendar, and then being able to have the ability to track and improve based on your lead generation activities. You all have a flyer right now. There's an email in there, theplanpartner at gmail.com. You email that today or tomorrow. You will be emailed back with a promo code to use this program for free. It's not going to cost any of you in this room a penny. You'll be able to use a plan partner to plan out your work week. Gabe, you've been using it, right? Yeah. How do you like it? It's good. I like it. It kind of gives you options on what kind of prospecting you can do, schedule your open houses. You know, and I like the color coordination. The color different coordinate. colors, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. So it knows when we gotta get to work. It's green for money. Yeah, green for money. Yellow for learning. admin. Yeah, admin. Yeah. Red for off time. Off time, yeah. And white for breaks and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I like it though. I appreciate the you let me use it. Well, we developed it specifically for the rethink group. Um, the idea was all of us, remember back, for those of you who've been members in the past, we have these little tracking sheets where every day you have to track your numbers by hand. Mm -hmm. We took that idea and we put it on digital for you. So use the program, it's free for all of you, it's for you. Please use it, it'll really help out, okay? Any questions on Plan Partner at all? No? Oh, okay. And it links to your Google Gmail, so. Yeah, it links to your it, account. It goes right to your account, so you don't have to log in technically. I'll let you keep you going on what you got to do for the day. It's pretty cool. It's free. It's easy. We're opening up to yes, ma'am. How long is the trial? The trial is going to be uh, for as long as I am allowed to let you use it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to have at, at least, at least for 30 days, at least. Okay, Nicole. Vic, is this replacing the um, the tracker then? That's the plan. Okay, thank That's you. the plan because on this. There's one little component that we haven't completely built out yet, but it's the agent to agent challenges. Where I can challenge you and you can challenge me and everybody on the plan partner can see the challenge and we can see the progress. So kind of gamifying it, you know? So, you know, I want to lose. I know you're a type A personality, you don't want to lose, right? So that's what it's about. Take a look when you get a chance and we'll give you that free promo code. Any other questions on this? No. Can you turn the lights on all the lights, please? Because our agents are going to come up right now. This is what's really what you came for, right? You didn't come here to hear about, you know, Plan Partner or Matterport or, but you didn't. What you wanted is some inside intel from some superstar agents. And this is our fourth year running this program, the Top Agent Panel. And I'm very excited. I'm very happy that we have uh, three of our superstars in the top 25 of the company with us here tonight to share what they do in their business that's helped them get from the rookie agents that they were, to the seasoned veteran, to top producing agents. And that's what tonight is about, okay? Here's the format, guys. We have a few questions already set up for them that are gonna answer the majority of your questions. And okay, we got some insight, it's already laid out for you. Please hold your questions until we open it up for audience Q&A, is that fair? Yes. Okay, so um, without further ado, let's go ahead and bring up our top agents uh, from left to right. Uh, Mr. Dusty Mulhern from the Berkshire Hathaway Cerritos office. <laughs> Mr. Kathy Salinas from the Bixby Knoll Brand. <laughs> and Mr. Brandon Lutran from the Hosland Heights. We hey, did a little paper, scissors. Well, that's fine. Obviously, we're all comfortable. Okay. This is actually pretty good. 
Let's go ahead and, and introduce each other, okay? So, so Brandon, who are you in office? You know, what are you, what is, uh, how long have you been in business? What were your numbers for 2018? What do you plan to do in 2019? In, uh, my name's Brandon Lutran with the Hacienda Heights office. Started in real estate in two, uh, 2006. I got into real estate because my wife needed help with open house, so I got shoved into doing open house, and that's how I started. Mm -hmm. 2018, uh, we didn't reach our goal of 40. We did about 38 Yay. sites, yeah. just two of us, and a part-time part uh, assistant. 2019, um, we're still adjusting the goals, our, our different goals, so uh, we're trying to break the 50 unit mark, right. my, my team mm -hmm. and I, so. Um, that's our goal for 2019. All right, good job, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. How long in the business? What were your numbers for 2018? What's the plan for 2019? Okay, well, I don't know how I'm gonna follow those numbers, but <laughs> I uh, so I've been in the business for almost seven years. I have um, so last year was a difficult year for me because many of you guys that know me, I had a partner that quit on me, so it took me out of the business for maybe seven months. So, uh, most of the year I did not work, but I still was able to do um, not much, maybe like five million last year. So it wasn't my best year, but I was, it's been really wrapping up ever since and it's creating a snowball effect for me. So next year I should probably be able to do uh, 15 to 20 sides, just from what's, just getting back into it now. Good for you, Dusty. Think about that. Seven months on the sidelines, seven months on the sidelines, Came back in for five months and made top 25. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so if you're lagging it right now and you know that you are, okay, there's plenty of time to pick up, right? So got 11 months left in the year. Kathy, how long hey, in the business? Um, 2016, so it's going on, two, it's two and a half years. So, um, so what else? Uh, so number, my G is it, do I do GCI? Is up, that to you, up to you. So my GCI was um, like 298, my goal was 369, I didn't hit it. So, and this year I hope to reach 369. If that's, that's just a weird, stupid number. I have all over my office and everything and just in my head. 369 is good. Well, yeah, 369. 369. And, um, and, and then, so I did what? I think like 19 sides. And um, I, I really, I'm shooting for 20% of my business to be referrals this year. So I really feel strongly about that. I'm on fire for it. I've done five, I mean, I've got five referrals going, I just feel really strongly about it. I'm super excited. So. You were telling me on the break, you're, you're looking for that work-life balance. Right? Yeah. We're gonna talk about that in a, in a second, okay? Yeah. So right. let's, let's switch it up for some of our newer agents in the room, because we do have some new agents in the room, yes? How many rookies do we have? Keep it real, rookie. First 12 months, you're not a rookie, so. Okay. Put both of your hands down, okay? Stop it. Josie back here was one of our guests on our very first Top Asian panel, and I'm thinking, I didn't know if this rethink thing was gonna go any further, so we went for the, you know, you're wonderful, you're not a rookie, by far. So, as rookies, okay, and any of you can answer this question, totally up to you. As a rookie, what were some of the biggest obstacles that you faced getting the business off the ground from rookie to becoming a seasoned veteran? I started in 2006, and um, the first thing Bruce told me was, go learn this thing called short sale. And I said, okay, it's coming up. I said, I've, I've never seen short sales, and I don't know what short sale was. And I thought that was easy, so I just took the class, get certified, <laughs> and uh, coming from the industry where I did a full-time job marketing in a high-tech company, that was a lot of pressure, but coming into real estate was actually easy for me, especially the first six months. And uh, when I encountered short sale, I have the whole package ready, where nobody knew what short sale was. I say, just fill out this form, and I started out short sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first year, I got 58 listings. Not all of them short sales, but I focus on expires and short sales, but the majority of them were short sales. Wow, 58 wow. listings in year one. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, first year. 
So obstacles, my first. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, the <laughs> I think obstacles. Fear, fear was my biggest obstacle. Okay. So I, I think my fear was my biggest obstacle with paperwork. So I, 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 I choked down the first six months myself, and then, um, and then I hired a transaction coordinator, which is my left, my right arm, my neck, my head, everything. Mm. She's amazing. So um, I interviewed her, and I said. I hate paperwork, and she said, we're perfect marriage, I love it, and like, how are you sick? So, like I thought, I just didn't understand. So we have a great thing, and I'm just so, I just, that changed so many things. Yeah. Okay, good, good, yeah. good, good. That's the awesome, biggest obstacle, starting off as a rookie? So I had a... Uh, well, it wasn't your uh, last name, right? It was, your last name was not... It doesn't do awesome. anything for me. It doesn't do anything for me. So no one knows it. Well. The real is the name. So it doesn't do anything for clients. But um, many obstacles that I've had then is still pretty much stuff that I have now. It's uh, I'm just getting ready to get ready on some stuff that I should just be doing, as well as uh, um, over-preparing and overdoing stuff, which I guess is not a bad thing, but if you do it too much, you could just not focus on the stuff that needs to be done, the productive stuff, while design, spending eight hours on a flyer or something like that, instead of passing out flyers for seven hours and doing it for one hour or something like that, and wasting a ton of money on pretty much everything you could think of. And uh, elaborate on that, because that's actually one of our next questions. As a rookie agent, it seems like so many people, as soon as you get your license, Right? You're getting phone calls and emails from people and they're asking you to spend all this money because it's a, it's a godsend. It's going to save your business. It's going to grow your business. What were some of the worst things as a rookie you spent your money on? Cover of the penny saver was one of them. <laughs> I did that for, uh, I don't know, like six, seven months. And it was, uh, I, don't, I think it was like $300 every couple weeks or a month or something like that. And it got me nothing. No, I got one call out of it the whole entire time and no one ever called really besides that. And he just had a question about something that he couldn't afford to buy or anything at all. And, uh, but it, did, it just doesn't, it just didn't work. And more stuff like that, just spending flyers, making postcards that I never passed out, um, and just a bunch of just wasted stuff that I just bought and didn't do anything with. Did you have anything like that, Kathy, when you started in 2016, anything that you spent money on that you wish you could take back? I didn't spend any money for the, uh, my first time spending money was this last year. Okay. So, um, so I, this last year I did waste money on a CRM I never used, because I looked at it once and I freaked out, so I was to the computer, and went and farmed or something, <laughs> like, but because yeah, it was just scary, I went, what? So I, I paid for months and months and months and didn't, I just acted like it didn't even exist. You know and then we, I canceled it and I moved on to something else. Do you know that we have a free CRM in yeah. Resource Center? Well, yeah. You could have not, you could have not <laughs> moved for that and not opened it yeah. and the same effect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living yeah. but I'm letting the rookie agents know, if you're not making money yet, you should probably use all the free tools that our network offers you before you go spend a dime on something else. Right? Yeah. Exhaust the tools that you have and then to grow, go from there. How about you, Brandon? Was there anything as a rookie taking 58 listings, short sale listings, your very first year, that you spent money on that you regret? Yes. I think Dennis know that I think the first year I bought all the bench uh, ads <laughs> around the office. <laughs> I did. I negotiated 20 bench <laughs> because it's an ego thing because all the top agent was doing it and I thought, like, hey, I'm going to have my face in front of our office and you know like about a mile east and a mile west of Kalima you'll see me and also on Valley and it cost me about four thousand dollar a month and I have to commit that for two years okay. it, hurts. Oh. it hurts yeah so I mean that was over but I, I learned from there I, I bought ads too uh, on the uh, different magazine lifestyle magazine I bought it in home and land magazine my own page and that didn't do me well, but I learned from that yeah. by changing the message and by changing the photos. Now I still run some ads, and they're more effective ads. I can share with you that, uh, you know, I still in the niche ads, like the uh, San Gabriel Asian real estate ads. I still in the, um, like, the Vietnamese ads. So those are pretty, I will say, inexpensive for me. And I do run free ads right now with uh, Craigslist. And I run a, a few different type of ads I can share it to you. And those, you know, don't cost me anything. I got a lot of leads. I have more leads I can handle, you know, so. Are you writing that down? Yeah. Yes. I, 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 yeah, so, so 
if, if you oh, want me to gonna, share, we're gonna, we're gonna yeah. get to it. We're gonna get. Don't give all the secrets away. No, I can. I can give you whatever you guys want. That's what Dennis wants me to share. And uh, you know, if you want buyers, uh, you know, just make sure that you get a photo wherever you're advertising that photos in that specific area or city. Just get the cheapest house. Get the uh, single family three bedroom home and put a price on it. Whether it's sold pending, sold last year, a withdraw. Just put it on, and they'll call you. And it's free on Craigslist. I'll show you how to put that on Craigslist. So I have another question for you. Um, did any of you start out part-time or you went right all the way in full-time? Full-time for your full company. Okay. No, just went all the no way care. in, mm -hmm. right? And you, you started off recruiting for the company. Yeah. And you said, I, I'm, I can do way more. Well, at, yeah, at 21, I had, my, I had my license at 21 years old. And then I, I had my first listing appointment. And I showed up and the broker didn't show up. I didn't know what I was doing. And the guy left me out of the house. It was really bad. So I like, so I stopped and I had a family. I went into a I was a corporate sales trainer for Jenny Craig. And so I have a lot of, lot of sales experience. So I went to, 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 to do that. And um, then I went um, and again, had I moved to, um, yeah, just started doing the kid thing and the family thing. And then I'm like, okay, the kids are getting older. I'm gonna do my dream, my dream thing. I'm gonna go back when they're in high school. So. Um, I went and said, hey, can I get my license? And he said, yeah. I said, oh, by the way, do you have anything for me to do part-time? And he said, yeah, I, um, call. I'm like, oh, yeah, I totally call. I've done it for years. And so I called, and it was like for five years. It was like, way comfortable. I was really nine to one or something. I forget my schedule. And I, mm -hmm. I called, and then Bruce is like, are you going to get your – are you ready? Are you going to get your license yet? I'm like, yeah, 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 I am. <laughs> so then I, I, when I dove in, I dove in. Yeah. Dustin, you part time or full time right away? I started off with the mindset of full time, but it ended up being full time because my first deal, I decided to take the rest of the year off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was the biggest check I've ever had in my life, and uh, I just decided to go to Hawaii for a few months. And uh, but I was also a recruiter before that, so I was doing that while I was getting my license at corporate. And uh, as soon as I I guess started working, I decided to stop recruiting and then do that deal. I don't know how long it took me, maybe a month or two. And then, I was off. You're off. That's Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> and then I came back and just Which week. island? Oh, I was, oh, wow. North Shore. Yeah, North Shore. Why Bay? Yeah. Nice. How about you, Brandon? You, you started helping your wife. Yes. So you, as an agent, did you start part-time with your wife, or did you go all in full-time? Well, I, I started illegally doing real estate. <laughs> I didn't have my license yet, and um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the story. My wife, she's not very... This is a broker of record. <laughs> my, my wife, she's not very technology-friendly. I'm the geek in the family at that time, and our kids were really young. So she gave me these smart keys and then give me her MLS access. You say, hey, you know, I have a buyer looking for this. Can you look for me? You know, and you know, and I'm, I'm using her MLS and that's how I started. During the day, I do my trading on my uh, uh, computer industry and I am helping her. And in the weekend, I help her with open house. I use her super key. I went into people. I didn't even know it was illegal. So I started doing that. I said, this is easier than my job. So when I got my license, I didn't come to the office meeting yet because I'm not legal at that time. So, so I got shoved into doing real estate legally. So I, I started like part time doing open house for her and talking to people. And she just put Lutran team and took a picture of me and her with her license on the bottom. And I'm her assistant. So I told her, hey, the, uh, we're with the Lutran team, I'm, I, I'm her assistant, and I, I'm here to do the open house, basically. That's what I do. So I, uh, that's how I started. What a story, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What a story. Yeah. Huh? Okay. That seems, it's, it's for, legit For about two yeah. years. She told me that when she make more money than me, that she'll retire me from my job. And I said, that's great, right? And uh, I help her to retire me. But she said, no, you get into the real estate with me. So that's how I got into real estate. Oh, she reeled you in. Hope I didn't see yeah. gotcha. yeah. well, One more question about you know, uh, getting into the business and the transition from newer agent um, to seasoned agent. When about did you, or if you have at all, did you incorporate your business? Have you done that? Yes. I mean, the first year, first year. The, yeah, okay. we incorporated. What about you, Dustin? I have not, but I know you need to. Well, you don't need to do anything. Or you should. You're an independent contractor, yeah. and if we told you you need to do something, you'd be an employee. So you should, but I you should don't do need it. To. And I will do it someday. How about you? 
Well, my CPA told me to do it after my first 43000 of commission. Mm -hmm. So that was like, you know, last year that was the first month. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to totally do it and whatever. And then I didn't end up doing it. And um, I guess I think it's going to be more beneficial for me once I start um, buying my first investment property, which is my goal for this year. Uh, LLC so, that. Yes, What's LLC and the corporate. So they, I'll be doing LLC rather than corporate. Use, a, mm -hmm. use a, uh, S Corp. Okay, and save yourself 20% off taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can talk about that. In your wallet. Okay. Yeah. Like so that. just ask. Yeah, you might. Yeah. It's more, yeah. more time in Hawaii. A lot of good good time. Kauai. Kauai is where it's at. Now. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that. Let's get into some things as as seasoned agents now. Okay. Um, well, any one of you can take this, uh, or all of you. Totally up to you. But could you describe your typical work day? What time do you wake up? What time do you arrive at your location of the business? You know, what is your afternoon look like? When do you call it a day? You want me to take it? Anybody. Okay. So I wake up around 10, 11 a.m. And then I... <laughs> <laughs> In Hawaii. <laughs> and uh, then I just sit around watching Netflix or something for a few hours. And just, okay. What I really do is I'll wake up. Um, I have my alarm set for like 6 a.m. Then I'll... I'll snooze it a little bit, and then wake up maybe like 6.20. And then I'll start looking at my phone for a little bit, just looking at emails that I got over the night. I'm just checking everything, see if I got any messages or anything, contact, reach out to me, see what I have to do for the day. And then um, I'll start getting ready, uh, either depending on the day. Um, if I'm running a little late, I'll do my, because I do 10 miles on my bike every day. So I'll do that either in the morning or later on in the day. So it just depends on what I have set for that morning. But usually I'll just go down to the office and uh, just start working until I have to uh, do my appointments. And then that's pretty much how I do it. What time do you usually set your appointments? Uh, a perfect day, what time does Dusty set his appointments? It's usually later on in the day. Mm -hmm. um, four o'clock? Yeah, what is four. Six thirty for you? Six thirty <laughs> sometimes works better for me, yes. Um, sometimes midnight depending on whenever the client wants to meet. Um, usually, um, I work 24-7. I don't really have a life outside of work. Just because uh, I just want to dedicate all my time to my business, and everything that I do is for my business, because I have to sacrifice now to be successful in the future, yeah. is really how I do it. I like that. Mm -hmm. Work harder right now for three to five years, as hard as you can, so in the next 10 years, yeah. Everybody else can try to catch up. Yeah. Right. And of course, there's prospecting in that time at the office, getting ready for my escrows, doing all of that, handling everything that I have to do, preparing my marketing. Because I usually do huge grand events for my listings, so and they take a, a lot of preparation. So that's usually where a lot of my time goes: is preparing these huge events and inviting as many people as I can to these things because it costs me a lot of money. So I want to make it worth it. So, just to be clear, he doesn't wake up at 11 o'clock. <laughs> he does not, okay? Wait, what do you do? Would you like to share your day, your start time, and you know, what your day looks like? Um, I, I get up at 5. I'm on the 5 a.m. Sharon Srivasa call. And um, I've been doing that for like a year, I think. <coughs> um, it doesn't come easy to me. I set the, set the phone in, my, in the kitchen area, and that makes me stumble through my bedroom to my kitchen to pick it up. I grab my phone into the living room, call my 5 a.m., put it on put it on speaker. My dogs are all over me. And I, um, I, I check in with everybody. And then I listen to what, it's a, it's a 5 a.m. call, it's a motivational, um, it's, it's 5,000 entrepreneurs, not only they get on all at once, but um, they are gathered together and they inspire each other. And sometimes and people take it differently. There's different people that take it every week or whatever. And then I check emails. I check everything that's junk before nine o'clock, and then um, everything all the everything I can handle that's not in front of people. I do before nine o'clock. Um, I may do like make my lunch, make my dinner, do the dogs, whatever I'm doing. Do all of it, everything. You know, um, I do prayer, meditation. I do an hour of an hour or two podcasts in the morning every morning. Um, because I have really great podcast people that I, that, I, that, I'm, that I check in with and actually when they do their lives, they include me, so I'm on their lives with them. So they're like, you know, they, we back and forth um, have that connection. Um, so I love, I, I'm, in, I'm in a couple of groups that that's really important to me. And then, and then after that, I, um, and then see, I take my daughter to school at 7.30 and then... Oh. 
You know, I don't always go into the office. I'm out and I've got a severe farm I'm building, really, like, really, like, I'm taking one street and making and mastering it right now. I've had seven transactions on one street in this last year. So I'm just married to that street right now. And I do, I have three farms, but I'm married to one street. I mean, severely. So, and then I have, um, I have a social media coach, and I have a, a coaching call around 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And then um, I do appointments when I have them. I don't have a certain time I do them whenever I can. And, um, and I mean, I, I work mm -hmm. until, I, I did, I took it, I, I was on the phone at 10 o'clock at night, Sherry. We were on the phone with, yeah, we did a deal. We just, we, we just, um, she sold my listing in the country club. So I was like, so we were on the phone and I called her at night. Daddy calls me, I'm like, where are you? Just call me when you can. And she called at 10. I'm like, perfect. I'll, I'll take the call. Wonderful. We, we'll work always, right? So thank you. What time do you call her today? If you don't have any appointments. 9.30. I'm 9 really yeah. strange. I know it should be later, but I can't handle like later. I don't do any TV. I don't do any radio. It's too overwhelming for me. So I do, I'm reading like three books right now. I'm on, I have like, I have about 15 books on Audible. Audible? I'm very, I'm, I'm, I've always been hooked on Audible. Audible's the best. Yeah. yeah. The best. So, if you guys don't know about Audible, who doesn't know what Audible is? Okay. So you all know about it? I'm not going to tell you about it. But. <laughs> Brandon, what does your day look like? What time do you wake up? What time are you at your place of business? And the perfect day, what time are you setting your appointments? Well, my day usually starts about 6 and 6 a.m. <laughs> and at 6 a.m. I will do my exercise until 7.30. Mm -hmm. And at 7.30 I will um, go on, log on to one of my coaching websites and listen to a few things, especially like motivation or different ideas and things that I'm going to implement that day and I'll do my to-do list by 8 o'clock at my home office before I get to the office. Okay. I'll do my, because I focus better at home to write all my to-do things down. And a typical day is that I continue to, to put new ads up and uh, I put new ads, like about four to five ads every day. So I, at any given time during my peak, I have like 40, 50 ads running. Okay. Fire set. You're, Fire do, set. you're doing the Craigslist craze, ads you're Yes, about? yes, Craigslist and Facebook. You're doing that at 8 o'clock before you get yes. to the house in the Yes, before I go to the office, I usually get to the office about 9.30. And at 9.30, I usually do a few things like calling up the night before. My afternoon, after lunch, I usually schedule my showings, whether it's a listing. Uh, listing is more flexible, but my showing usually like after 4 p.m. And on my Saturday, it's my exercise in the morning, and uh, my showing time will be, I have no training on Saturday, no updating, but about 8, uh, um, about 6.30 to about 10-ish, I'll, I'll do my typical exercise. And then uh, 10 to 12, I'll meet clients. And I'll usually reserve in the afternoon for open house. And if I don't have open house, I'll reserve that for client. But generally, I always have open house going. So, mm -hmm. and uh, on every other Sunday, uh, I will take a day off. But Sunday, I also do open house. I can't keep up with these guys because they're a lot younger. I'm probably twice the age as Dusty. I'm 48 years old, so I don't have that much energy to work 24 hours. My typical <laughs> day, uh, I sleep because Bruce asked me to sleep at 9.30. And I, I, I try not to sleep so early. I can't sleep so early. So I usually sleep at 10.30. So I sleep at 10.30. I watch my game. I watch, I listen to my radio. I have to do that. That's uh, good. Yes. I'm just weird. So when I, watch my, yeah, when I watch my game, I'll write down things that I need to do. I always have like little notes next to my bed, next to my, my, my TV of what I need to do to improve the business. But that is what I do. I used to work a lot harder. It, it, it doesn't mean that I, I don't. I work a little bit smarter. Uh, I used to have client dictate my time, but now I cut off my phone. So when you... You, if you know me personally, you know where to call me at 10 o'clock when, when I pick up. But my work number, I don't pick up. So they leave a message and I'll call them back next day. So, so That's what you, I do. You said something really important right yeah. now that I think I, I want the, hear, the room to hear that again. <laughs> you used to let your clients dictate your time. Right. And now you don't allow that. Right. You're dictating the time to them. Yes. I mean, when you have enough leads going on, you can actually cherry pick. And I, you know, I, I don't mean to be rude. Some of the clients are, are paying the butt. They'll, they'll call you any time, you know? So if you let them, they will call you, so. Isn't that gold? For the yeah. rookie agents in the room right now, and for our seasoned veterans, you know this is true. When you have a ton of leads, you can pick the ones you want to work with. 
that are going to work with you, not the ones that you're stuck working with because you haven't done any lead generation. When you don't do any lead gen, you don't have that many options with people to work with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So Brandon is at that point in his career, and all, all three of these professionals are there, where they can cherry pick the leads they want to work with. So let me ask you this. Um, you're dictating a schedule. Yes. They're not dictating to you. How far ahead, if at all, do you schedule your appointments with buyers, the listings? Do you, if somebody calls you and says, Brandon, I'm ready to list today, are you dropping everything and going to do it? Are you saying, you know what? I have a strict schedule and I'll see you tomorrow. Does four o'clock or does seven o'clock work better for you? It's all dependent on the situation, mm -hmm. I think. Um, listing, I'll try to t take it as close as possible to the time. Sure. Uh, but usually most of my schedule, it's like within the week. So I book like seven days out. And I do block out my vacation, so every quarter I take like a week to ten days off, and every other quarter I'll take like two weeks off. So I do the, uh, the, the relaxation, you really need it. I mean, you'll, you'll recharge, you'll come back better. And I find out that it is more effective for us when we take a vacation, especially a short vacation, like a three to five days. Just or get away. Three to five months and no yeah. <laughs> and, 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 no, yeah. And, and no personal phone calls. I mean, business calls. Business calls. Yeah. Just personal. Yeah. Now, see, how far out do you book appointments? Uh, this, uh, my listing appointment tomorrow was booked two weeks ago. Okay. And uh, the, point, the listing I took last week was booked um, also two weeks in advance. It just depends on whenever the client's needs are, but I try to book it as off as soon as possible. So if they're available tomorrow or today, I'm going to go make it happen today. Because my listing presentation and everything's already made. It's canned. It's already yeah. good to go. I just have to replace images to make it personal to them. Right. And so it's really easy to get everything ready and just go. Um, Kathy, how far in advance are you booking your appointments right now? I, I'm all over the place. I, I, I have one booked for, that was booked six months from like yesterday, or like, no, six months from May. Like in, maybe because on Facebook she contacted, we were back and forth with something. And she says, I want you to sell my house in California Heights. And I'm like, okay. And then she said, May of da da da, da and here's my information, da da da, and you're going to be on a. So, that's, so I have a six months and I have a 24 hours. And I'm, I'm, I don't, I, it's like, it's, everything's different. Everyone's different, really. Okay. Now, for all three of you, are you working your business off of memory? Or are you booking it using some sort of calendar, whether it's the old school paper date planners from Orange Coast Title, or are you using a Google Calendar, Apple Calendar setup? Which ones are you raising? Yes, I'm more of that piece of paper, okay. writing it down, jotting it in memory, but now I learned to use my smartphone. Okay. The good thing is that I do have a team, and I do have an assistant that actually helped me with a lot of these, uh, you know, um, what you call CRMs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my partner actually handles that oh, because yeah. I yeah. handle yeah. a lot of the leads that come in. I will say these are the, the buyer or the seller, they're A buyer, there's their B buyer or what, whatever they are, I classify. This is what they're looking for, set them up on email, set them up on auto email, set them up on letters, and then just let me know when to call them. So that's, <laughs> that's, but that's my job, it's to do the initial call and ask all the critical questions that, that what are their needs. And then if they're not like, uh, uh, I need to buy it right away or I need to sell right away, it goes to my team. That's how I do it. What are you doing right now, Dusty? Memory or systems? I do three different things for appointments. So I first write it down in my notes on my iPad, which is synced to all my devices, my laptop and my phone. Mm -hmm. And then um, from there, I'll put it into a calendar with and in send them that invite because you could invite them. So now they have it on their phone as well. And but mostly, it's I just remember when I need to do something, and uh, I confirm obviously on my phone and everything to make sure it was 6 p.m. But mainly, it's phone and memory. You're on top of the business, but you're using the technology to make sure that you make it there and don't get sidetracked. Yep. Sounds mm -hmm. like, yeah? Because there's been times that I forgot that I had an appointment, and then it pops up like, oh, yeah, I have to oh, do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I always have it in multiple places just in case. Well, but, well, I like with the calendar apps now, see with your maps yeah. and your live traffic. So if you tell if you have an appointment, you know, at 9:30, it's going to say there's traffic on the five freeway. You better leave in 10 minutes. Yeah. You know. So I love that. That's good. And I guess I have it on other things too because it's connected to my Alexa, my Google Home, and all that stuff too. With this, it pop up on the screen. It's all everything. across all platforms. Yes. So that's, that's it's awesome. everywhere. I don't have it on my Alexa. I don't do that. 
Have you, how are you doing? I don't have an Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> are we doing it on paper? Are we doing it on paper or are we um, doing it on no, um, Let's see. I have a Wonderlist, W-U-N-D-E-R-L-I-S-T. Cheap, it's, well, it's cheap, it's free, so that's good. I have, um, it's, I have Wonderlist. I have, um, of course, on my phone. I set alarms on my phone. And then um, I need to get stronger with that this year. That's my one of my goals this year. My um, husband, who's my partner, who just joined me last year, he's like my, my he's like the behind the scenes guy. He likes to call himself, and um, he does a lot of my open houses. Well, I I, well, I go prospect. I'll do open houses and prospect, or if I have multiple listings, I'll do we'll split it up, and then he he just texts me everything. And then um, I have my memos are always full. And then I transfer my memos to, to Wonderlist. And it's not, I don't, I don't recommend that way. But I, I do need something stronger. For sure. So it's working for you now? Yeah, it, yeah, it needs to be tighter. To get that 369K yes, number. Yes, it does need to be tight, tighter. tighter. I know that, yourself. yes. Good, okay. Well, yeah. at least you, you're recognizing it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you make the good changes. I'm sure that you will. Yes. Um, now, we're, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Okay. Now, without getting into too much detail, Without getting into too much detail, because that'll take up another three hours, and we don't have three hours. Uh, Fred and Beth want to get out of here tonight. But very briefly, very briefly, what are your top five systematic lead generation sources that you're working right now? Anybody? I have, um, I have something that I really feel strongly about. I feel like you should get a farm that's very small, a street, a three streets, a community, it's whatever, and work it hardcore. I've been working, um, I've been working like a four-step system with my leads in in California Heights, which is where my new office is. And it's gotten me so it's gotten me tight with the community. Um, and anyway, so the so what they are is um, like so so I have uh, coming soon. I door knock like I door knock coming soon. Maybe I could do a flyer. Usually I do flyers. I'm a big flyer person. It just gives me something to hand to the person. So coming soon, then I um, say, and I do it, then I do it, hi guys, it's me again, it's Kathy. We're listed, oh my gosh, what are you listed for? Oh my gosh, blah, 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 da, da, da. oh my gosh, really? So we're like bonding and talking, and you're like, bye, see you later, okay, keep me posted. Okay, I will, totally, yeah. And so then you go, and then you, then you, um, you go, I'm having an open house. You go back again, the same street. I'm having an open house, great, can you make it? Da, da, da. Yeah, I can make it. Um, so God, and then I actually, you can door knock again. You can say, I'm having a wine and cheese party. Like, I, I, let, I love wine and I love cheese, I'll be there. So they like come to the wine and cheese party. So you get their information down. I, I've got, now I've got dog walkers, all the people on my, my one street I love. Um, and, then you, and then you say, you know, we just sold it. There's another fire. You door, door knock it again. You just, you know, so um, those are my leads. Those are my, my it's a big strong layers. That's what's really working for me right now is, is working those layers and building those relationships. Because these relationships are gonna be the next year. I mean, I have, it really, it's, it's all relational. So it's it sounds like, like you're doing, not just you, <coughs> but only in your geo farm, you're doing open houses, you're doing the door knocking, you're doing just this and just sold campaigns, all in those three to four streets. Yeah, well right now I'm concentrating on, <laughs> I do, I've done business all in California Heights as well, but I'm, really concentrating on this one, it's just this one street in California Heights that just, I feel like it's my home. So I'm gonna do like, um, I'm gonna do a Facebook page on it this year, and I'm also gonna do, um, um, I'm also, I'm give, gonna give away a, 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 um, a dozen roses, which, which it has to do with the name of the street actually. Um, and to like somebody every month or something or other and like surprise somebody or whatever. It's, it ties in with what the street, with the street, the name of the street is, it's cute. Okay. But um, it's about, yeah, it's just about working every single lead I have to the best and to the hardest I can, I can work. Is, and is there it's any worked. other lead systems besides the, the, I'm gonna take Paul Conner, where's Paul at? I'm gonna take Paul's verbiage of the farm centric. I'm going to take that because you're, you're really He's my centric. accountability partner. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I knew there was some connection there. Yeah, right? always. So, so you're, you're, you're <laughs> super farm centric. Is there any other lead gen source that you're working right now that's showing results for you? I don't pay for any leads. I don't, I don't, you don't, I don't, I don't know. To. I'm not, I don't. You don't have to. I'm yeah. not. A, um, so lead source, open houses and follow up with open houses. And 
I am in big on, um, I don't I don't believe in having somebody sign in because they're always, for me personally, they're either focus or whatever. So I don't have the energy to focus on that all the time. So what I do is I touch base with every single person that, with, that hits my open house. And then I say, listen, I am really strategic with who I hire, plumbers, electricians, um, you know, roofers, uh, painters. I have the best connections. Would you like, did you have, you know, do you, would you like me to connect? Would you like me to, can I email you a list of them? And they're like, yes, I'm gonna do my kitchen. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, totally. So it opens up a conversation and you're like, you got, I've got it on my memo. So like I do that right with, with hopefully, hopefully most people that I see on my open houses. So I connect with them to where, where they're looking for so we can connect personally and I can start being that go-to person. That's my Thanks for sharing, yeah. I appreciate that. Hopefully you guys wrote some of that stuff down. Yeah. She's not spending any money buying leads. She's farm-centric and attacking that farm with different lead sources. Good for you. Esty, what are you doing? Top five lead generation sources that are working for you. I do the, the opposite. So I spend as much money as possible to get in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, what are you spending money on? So the way I generate all my business is I get it all to come to me. I don't really go after any of it. It all just comes from my hard work and efforts and I make sure everyone sees it. So what my biggest, biggest return on investment is my grand event open houses. So I do those for all my listings where I have it catered and I send out 2,500 to 5,000 invites. And as well, I send that out again as in escrow and then again, it's just sold. And then, so it's expensive. Cost me probably average is about two thousand dollars per listing and just advertising, and really we all know that's to advertise ourselves. It's it doesn't sell the home. It doesn't. It does do a really good job because it gets a lot of people to come in because I do staging, professional photography, I do the best of everything because I tell my clients I'm the best and I have to show them that I'm the best. Yeah. I because I, I I don't know what listing I've taken recently in the past year that I haven't told them that I'm the best at least fifteen times. I have to remind them, and I can't just say I'm the best, I have to obviously prove it by doing really hard work. And so I'm sending out, so I pay someone to pass everything out, and but I'm also passing it out myself in the immediate area, because uh, I need that for Instagram. I need people to see that I'm doing it, I'm building um, a whole presence and everything, so a lot of my business comes from my grand open houses, because each one of those usually gives me one to two to three listings from that. And then I'll get probably like four or five other people that want to say they want to do something in the next year, couple years, that want to list. So it really, really works. And then my next biggest thing I would have to say is social media. Because I'm doing these big events and doing all this work that I just documented, just posted everywhere. So you, any of you guys are following me on one of my two pages, mostly Property Cousins on Instagram. That's where I'm posting pretty much a lot of stuff that I'm doing. And I'm getting a lot of business from there. People, past clients, they're all on there because I do not follow up with my clients, my past clients. They are all my friends on social media and we just interact that way. I comment on their posts, they comment on mine and that's how we're staying in touch and I'm getting past clients and referrals from that because they, we all interact with each other. Yes. Yep, and that's, that's how I stay in touch. And my next biggest thing would have to be Zillow ads. I spend about 12000 a year on that. Um, it usually works out pretty well. It gives me at least my money back as the minimum, so I'm never losing money. Um, and then I'm getting a lot of people who want to do something in the future. Not necessarily they want to do something right now, but some people want to do stuff in the future. My best still lead ever probably was from three months ago, and he's a billionaire and wants to spend maybe 100 to $200 million. And so we've been looking at some huge buildings and it just hasn't pulled the trigger on anything yet because the numbers just have to make sense and what's available is not really good cap rates and all that so it's just hard to find stuff but we're still looking and um so let me ask you a question yeah. about the zillow because i know a lot of people here have some mixed feelings about zillow and that's okay um but i i know that zillow is going to send you random leads and they're yeah. going to call you the concierge are going to call you Who's picking up those phones to qualify those leads? Is that the point? Is it you or is it in your team? It's me. It's you. Every time. Before, I would have it as my partner, Nick, mm -hmm. for those of you guys who used to know him. 
he uh, he would handle it a lot of the times, but he didn't answer the phone all the time. So I would take over and set the appointments and get it done. But usually just me, the concierge does answer the phone and try to connect you, but I don't really feel the concierge does anything but slow you down. Because last week I had someone call me and the concierge finally connected me and as soon as he answered the phone he was very angry that the concierge kept calling and texting him every day trying to get him to do something, which is great that they're doing that, but it obviously doesn't you know, make the client happy when that person doesn't know anything about the house as well as so but it, it works out it's gotten me a lot of business um i don't i don't like it because it makes me lazy more business comes to me that way i rely i used to rely on it a lot and um but if the only reason i'm keeping it is because i'm grandfathered in to have all of my listings as the only agent on there so so no other agent who's paying for zillow is getting calls from my listings and that's why i keep it that makes sense. Okay. And that's the only reason. Other than that, it does not. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so take that with a grain of salt. Do your own uh, exploration on that. But you got grandfathered into a good deal. Yeah, so, so I've been with it for five, so six doing years. Mega open houses. I saw you post the other day, and you're having a, a you're having a game. Taco trucks? Is that what you're doing? Taco trucks and and. Bar where you, where you stuff out uh, there there's going to be a. It's just a taco guy there. He has his whole trend set up with. Uh, I don't know, just taco stuff. <laughs> Whatever all that food is, all that, and then they're playing music and everything, it's just like a whole entire experience in a party. Usually when people come to just a basic open house, they're in and out in five minutes or less. This time they're staying for like an hour. And we're all talking, we're all interacting and having a good time. They just see how impressive it is. They just see all the people there and they think, I want this for my house. Yeah. Even though that no one there bought the house, <laughs> they think they think they're buying it, so it makes me look good. It creates the buzz for you, yeah. right? It makes you the agent of choice in that neighborhood. Yeah. Good for you. So mega open houses, we're doing social media, mm -hmm. we're doing Zillow leads. Anything else you're working on that, that's really productive? Ex expired. So we, we call expired. Um, so we have a meeting in our office a couple days a week where a bunch of us get together. A bunch of you guys are here right now. And we all get together and we just pass. It's more of a, you don't get to talk to as many people because the way we do it is just to improve yourself. It's for learning. We have, um, so in my property cousin HQ, I have a, a big TV on the wall where I have my laptop near to it, which is Mojo Dialer. Where we're calling with a three line auto dialer, Mojo expired leads, and we pass the phone around the circle one at a time so each person gets to talk to someone. So that way we're all watching, like let's say Kathy was on the phone and uh, we're all giving like a little feedback while she's on the phone, handing her notes, like say this, say that. And afterwards we'll discuss what happened. And like, oh, you should have said this, or you shouldn't have said that. And it just really improves what you're doing, makes you sound better. And But basically it gets you comfortable in front of other people. Mm -hmm. Because, I don't know, I feel like I'm super confident now. I just doing that. it. I love that. You know, we preach to a lot of our new agents uh, at our Saturday series and things like that about, you know, getting on the phone, being able to perfect your craft, so when you're in person, it's a lot easier. You don't have practice already. Yeah. So, it makes me very comfortable on my appointments now. Very, very comfortable. Yeah. You're, you're ready for any objection. Pretty much. You've done it over the phone hundreds, thousands of times. Yeah. Write that down. Expired calls are for practice as well. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Is there anything else you're doing that these guys and gals need to know about? It's all basically, I guess, just showing people what you're doing all the time. Because if you're not filming it or showing it on social media or sending it out to somehow, you're not really doing it. You're you're doing it for yourself, and no one else is going to do it. Show no that you're doing it, and basically, I'm just getting referrals and just people come to me, and that's what I like. It's wonderful, man. That's good. Good for you. Thank you for sharing that, Dusty. Hopefully, you guys got some good stuff out of that. Now let's come to Mr. Lutran. Brand. Yeah, about the showing uh, all your friends on social media what you do. Last year, Bruce had that challenge. He gave me that challenge. He said, Brandon, why don't you just show you know, all your friends on Facebook what you do on a regular basis? I was surprised. I got a lot of leads from there for doing that. I was always very busy and I don't have time to video, but I decided to stop and, and did that. And for 10 days, like I promised Bruce I'll do it, and I have a lot of leads. And uh, you know, unfortunately, I did not continue doing that because I went back to do what I, I always have a lot of leads, and those are the leads that I'm more comfortable with. It's, uh, I market to a lot of investors, mm -hmm. um, especially flippers, 
the last two years, um, most of our business, about 50% are dealing with investors. I, I comp for them, I look for the property for them, I talk to wholesalers for them. You know, I'm, I give them an evaluation after the repair costs, and then I'll tell them how much they make. And generally speaking, like, you get double-ended because you're gonna buy for them and you're gonna sell for them. There's a property that I actually have four sites. So, I, I, I short sell, I sell it to an investor, he, he fixed it, I, I sold it to a buyer. So, in 90 days, I have four sites for one house. So, so for investor, I, I like that because I'm not very good with presenting on video, so, but I'm, I'm comfortable with numbers. So I do that a lot. So last year, um, many of you know that I do a lot of my listing with a lot of uh, uh, video, uh, videos or, or 3D, 3D Matterport or staging because these are all my investors and we have to do a little bit different to sell our property because last year was a tough year. Uh, but if we look at 30%, almost 30% of our business is referral and past clients. So we didn't even do much. We just have repeat clients that's coming back. And we didn't do a lot of that. We still continue doing expires. I, I don't call like, uh, like Dusty. I, I send postcards and I go knock the four cities that I target because I find out that the hardest part is to get them on the phone. And when you do get them on the phone, you'll get, what the hell are you calling me here for, right? You get the same thing. So what we did was we decided to door knock them and talked to them about the MAP program, the Guarantee Sold program, and uh, we get a lot of listing from that. Um, I don't know if you have a little tripod from Bruce. I make my own tripod, and I turn the words a little bit different, Guarantee Buy program. So uh, I get listing from that, and I, I do mail out to expires, and I have a guarantee that if I don't sell their home, in 30 days, I'll buy the home, That's, and I do get better response, especially with absentee owners. So on the expires, I have that going on. And also the new buyers, um, like I, I was talking about the Asian market. Real quick, let me, let me ask you a, me yeah, ask you a question. In regards to the 30-day guaranteed sale phone, if I can't sell your house in 30 days, yes. I'll buy it. Yes. Let me ask you this, are you utilizing our MAP Wealth Builder program for that? Yes and no. Uh, the reason is that it is that program, I'll show you later, I have some flyer, it's built based on the MAP program. But the MAP program is hard. Obviously, we have to buy it at the cost that we want to buy it. And if you can get, like the last few years, if you can actually get a, a house 10% 10, 10 below market, that's what we're buying, we're going to buy that. So that is the price that we're going to guarantee. We're not going to give them the price they want, and most of the time they went expire is because they're overpriced, right. but the condition is poor. <clears throat> so we offer free money for repairs. So we do have free money. I mean, Bruce and the MAP program, we, we have different type of money, but I have investors that will give money for that type of repair, but they, they are usually contractors. They're going to make, they have to make the repair themselves. Yeah. And then when you sell, the contractor will get paid. So I have different type of program, but that evolved from the MAP program. I was promoting the MAP program. I was door knocking, and that's all I talked about. It's the MAP program. So instead of calling a bridge loan, I, I usually call it, I have money for you to buy your next home. So instead of saying loan, it's, it's, a, it's a hard word. So I say money for you if you need to, to, to buy your next home. Okay. So I have all that program that basically, it takes the pressure out of a lot of sellers of signing a six months listing. So I usually do a 30 days listing. So I know that most of the time you say, hey, you know, why 30 days? Because in that 30 days, you can either know that the seller is motivated, if you can move the price point, and if you're doing your good job, they will extend your term. So uh, rather than another guy, we both that they don't know, and I'm, I'm the 30 days listing and he wants six months. See, uh, he will try me first because I'm more confident that I will sell in 30 days. So that's what you usually do. It's a 6% listing and a, thir six, a 30 days listing. And that's what we put pre-put on a listing agreement. But do, most of our listings go past 30 days. We just add another addendum to extend that. That's all. Okay. So, so you're, doing, you're doing work with investors? Investors, expires. Expires? Yeah, we, 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 clients? yeah we, do, we do the uh, referrals. Okay. business and we also do the new buyers so I, I handle a lot of the new buyers so I do the ads when you say new buyers like, do you mean first-time buyers or do you mean new home development yeah 
Uh, no, no new homes. Uh, two years ago, we did a lot of new homes. So I went out and did a lot of new homes and advertised new homes. I advertised really, really aggressive prices. Like Ontario, 2,500 square feet for 369 new home. There is a builder that's building that, so I advertise that. There's one builder by Frontier uh, in 2016 and 2017, which sold 23 new homes. And it, and it just one floor plan, it's 4,600 square feet in, Moren, in an area of Moreno Valley called Rancho Belago. I advertise it as Rancho, I, don't, I did put the word Belago purposely, and put Rancho, 4,500 square foot home for $460,000. And I, I have more than 20 calls each week, and I was able to sell to like 20 plus homes out in Rancho Belago. Are you putting this on Craigslist or are you putting it on your post? Yeah, ads. <clears throat> like local ads, I run like Penny Saver, but that's a similar one, but there, there's no Penny Saver in my area, but there's a, a little circular uh, circulation uh, similar to the Penny uh, Saver in our area, Diamond Wall Walnut, so I run an ad in there, I run new homes, I run a, a, a seller's guarantee, so usually I run those to get listings, and those are usually my top five. Wonderful. And I, I do door knock still. I do warm door knock, usually expire for sale by owners. You said you go to the expired, you don't call them. You no, postcard them and yeah. then you show up. You, you do pop ins? Yes. I, every morning I will do the four cities that it comes out expired. So I'll, I'll door knock them. I usually come with the tri foes, and then those are my guarantee program and also a thank you notes to say, hey, look, I think I have a buyer for you, and here's the uh, proof of funds. So I have a buyers with proof of funds ready, showing to them because my investor give me their proof of funds. So you just say you have a buyer, but I do have a buyer and a name and a, and, and a bank account statement saying that I have $900,000 and they're ready to buy your house and we want less talk. So I, I put that proof of funds in there. I, obviously I take out the account number, but the name <coughs> that's a legitimate buyer, he's an investor, he won't pay that full price, but he will buy any house. And you'll get an investor that will give you proof of funds, just like your uh, $100 million investor will give you a proof of funds, and then you can put that in and say, hey, look, I have a legitimate buyer. It's That's essentially soft. a letter of intent. Exactly. Yep. So that will give you more credibility. So that's what I do instead of calling, because I, I'm not good over the phone, and after a few F words, I'm, I'm just really tired. So I'll just door knock, because it's harder for them to, uh, to, to kick me out. And I usually drive my uh, marketing car, so I will block their car purposely in the driveway. I do, I do that. If they're going to work, I block their car. That is, uh, you know, I, I, even though there's driveway parking, right? I won't park in the street. I'll pull up in the driveway. And then if, if they know that I'm in real estate and I have a guaranteed sold program written on my car, your home sold or I'll buy it. So you have a car wrap? Yeah, I have two car wrap. Actually, I have three car wraps. But uh, I can show you my car wrap. It just used to block people's traffic, so they can't really kick me until I finish what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you exactly my script. It's just like, hey, you know what? Like, yeah, have... Okay, let's, let's do it right now. Let's yeah. go play right now. It's just like, hey, you know, hi. Hi there. How are, are you? Are you still interested in selling your home? Uh, I, I am the buyer. You know, I can buy your house. You're caught me off guard right now. But, you know, you're talking about my house? What was that? Yes. Thing? You're still interested in selling, right? It's expired. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, kind of unorthodox for you to knock on my door, but, you know. But I have a proof of fund. This is my account, right? I'm ready to buy your house if you're willing to talk to me about it. Let me put my monocle on this, right? Okay. So I see there's proof yeah. of funds. Okay. What is this going to do for me? So you want your home sold, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here to do that. And this is the buyer. Well, usually it's my account okay. with a corporation, a, a, a network investor. I'll give them the proof of funds. Okay. So you just that, walk yeah. up and say, hey, I'm, buying I'm brand new. <coughs> you want to still sell You don't want to talk to an agent, right? You don't want to pay commission, right? I, I can do that. Oh. Let's do that. Oh. I have a no commission program. You want oh. to sell it? Oh. Let's do it. Oh, he's got me already. I'm going to sign. See, 30 days okay. listing. I even take a seven days listing and sold the house. Because the guys say, hey, if you think you can sell it, why don't we do a seven day? I did it in seven days. Wow. So it's just like, once you get the listing, who cares, right? Seven days or 30 <laughs> days, you have control of it, right? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. when you sit them down and you say, okay, I'm going to evaluate your home. I'm going to give you a, a, a legitimate offer, right? But during the meantime, I can do this for you to get the price you want. Wow. Okay. 
That's interesting, right? Outside of the box type of thinking. I think we got to get your Jaguar here. Yeah, so the, 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 the commission yeah. objection, I don't care if they don't pay me. I, I took net listings before and, and I sold it. With, and the last net listing I sold, I made $42,000. It's a 0% commission on that listing saying that I will net the seller this amount. Anything above it will shall be commissioned. And listing agent will have the right to dictate the list price. And I list it at 1.2 and I sold for 1.1. Wonderful. Yeah. And I made $42,000. I can show you that. That's wonderful. On the listing. Oh. Completely outside. I'm going to Zero percent commission. Yeah, so right. so, so I work for free. Anything to the other side? Yeah. Yes. I split it because on the Asian Split's remark, zero. I can show it to you. <laughs> I say any offer, I put 2.5%, right? Any offer above, uh, at list price shall have two and a half percent. Anything below that, please contact me. Okay. So okay. I, I, I did, yeah. so it's a little different. Okay. If you don't want to pay commission, I still work. On a short sale, you don't pay commission, right? Right, right, right. It's about it. Yeah. And there's a net listing, it's legal, and nobody use it, right? That's pretty interesting the way you do that. That's really interesting. Actually amazing, good deal, good stuff, <laughs> jeez. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All of them have great ideas about this stuff. But let me ask you this, Dusty, you are big on social media. What has been a social media platform that has converted the most leads to dollars for you? Is it Facebook, is it Instagram, LinkedIn? It, it's both. So it's, I want to say Instagram mostly because uh, that's where a lot of people are seeing more of my stuff. That's where I post more things. Uh, Facebook, I do have um, some of my uh, older clients that are on Facebook, and that's where I interact with them most. The younger clientele is on Instagram, and it's just as simple as that. They're both giving me business. Where I keep in touch more with people is going to be Facebook. That's where I'm, I could like their stuff and I comment on their stuff. And on Instagram, I'm just liking it and commenting on little things here and there. But ma mainly, they come to me on Instagram, while Facebook. Uh, we're just interacting with each other's posts. So they both give me pretty much the exact same amount. It's just okay. different clientele on each one. Facebook and Instagram, no Snapchat. I have it, but I don't use it because it doesn't do anything. No Twitter? Nope. No LinkedIn? I have it. <coughs> in my space? No friends there? Kathy, are you getting any uh, lead generation turnover conversion on, on yeah. social media? Which yeah. one's the last one? <laughs> um, the last 100,000 I did in 2000 of my GCI um, in 2018, I did from one was my lead into my last eight deals in California Heights. It's, it's a it's an area that I market in. Um, she was it, it's in she's in Jazzercise, and she said to me, "I see you everywhere. You I see you at properties. You're just so busy. Do you have time for me, me little me, to sell your house?" I said. So, I think so. And then, um, and then, so it got me into the into the property, into the street, which was the which was the expansion of the of the business for that one street. And then, um, and then we just kind of just it went crazy. So that was directly because of Facebook. I see you everywhere. I see you. Yeah. So um, I see you. You know what you're. You know on your. I. You know they, they see my videos constantly so and they know money, how busy. You're making money off Facebook right now. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. No LinkedIn. No, I used to do LinkedIn. I believe in it when because I'm a big. I love blogging, although you wouldn't know that because I don't. I haven't blogged in a long time. When I was doing. Um, when I was at. Um, when I was at corporate. I would do a lot of LinkedIn. I would do a lot of, remember that, Ali? Do you remember show me showing you that? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I'd be like, oh my gosh. It, it, one time I said, I told Ali I was doing, I was going to do an elevator. Ele I was going to see how, who I could meet in, in the elevator. So I, did I tell you, remember that? So I brought a big thing of donuts in the elevator. And I said, I smiled at everybody. And I said, do you want a donut? And I, and I, like I just, I wanted just to do a little social experiment to see who would take my donut. Is, 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 and there was, 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 was this like, back when you were on the second floor? That's a really six floor. short elevator. It was sixth floor. No, sixth floor. Okay. Sixth floor. But I, but I wrote about it. I wrote about the experiment, and I did it for like 30 days. Like who would take my donuts? Some people took my donuts, and I made friends, and I, I knew, I knew people on every floor. 
but it was like it was so so fun. I just came up with it. It's it's thinking out of the box. And That's you what you get. That on, on LinkedIn, okay. Yeah. But right now yeah. Facebook is making you money. Yeah, for sure. But it's fun Facebook to blog on LinkedIn. Instagram. I love it. Yeah. Facebook is making me. Brandon, are any social media platforms making you money right now? Um, I don't do a lot of social media, but I do do Facebook, and uh, we spend I'll say maybe about close to $150 on Facebook app. Okay. But I think it will it give us about 10 to 15 leads that we work with. We only run one app or two ads. It is very geographic centric like where <laughs> we are. It's pretty good. When you're running the ads, Brandon, is it promoting a piece of property? Yes. Or is it promoting your service? No, it's, it's only Gee. about, when depending who you're targeting, like we usually target buyers and then we usually put up you know, a, a, a house in the area that they're familiar with and it's usually a good deal. Like the last um, ad that we have so many uh, requests, we have to stop, it's a short sell house in Walnut. It's with, that's where I work at. Uh, and it's a $400,000 short sale, 2,700 square feet. But you know, in Walnut for 2,700 square feet, it is a million dollar home. Yeah. But I advertise it at $400,000 fixer. And we got a lot, a ton, a tons of leads. I mean, those pay us that's really, really good. And but the leads on, on social media, it's it's not credible leads, right? You just have to go through them. My team members, they go through the leads. But on my personal page, I usually do the deal of the week. And usually those are the people that I know. <coughs> and then it's really fun because those are the people that have a personal relationship. They will call and talk to me directly and I build a better business transaction through that and I don't have to pay. What I usually do is that in my area, I will some of the property will pop up because I do an auto email to myself every other day of the best and the newest deal that comes up. So whatever comes up, I just put it up like the last one with Covina. It's a $300,000 single family home, 1,500 square feet. I put it deal of the day. And, and it's a fixer. And that got bid it up to 500 grand. But I got my friends, about seven people, call me, say, hey, Brandon, can you find something like that for me? So that ignite a conversation. Just on my personal page. I don't have a lot of friends. I have like probably 200 people that I know out of the 500 friends I have on Facebook. And the other 300 is just added because they know of somebody, you know? Yeah, so she so yeah. But, you know, just one, one of those properties that have seven people that I know personally and I can follow up with, you know, obviously, you know, they are, they are more, um, I'll say, flexible to buy different places. But they're looking for deals. But some of them want that deal. Or I, I brought two of them to go see the house and they say, oh, that's a lot of work. But eventually, that those homes get bidded over 500. I even have showed that to my investor, and we lost. But Facebook, you know, the deals of the week usually get a lot of, you know, attention. I don't have to pay for it, and you can put it up, you know, wherever you market it, you know, pick the city, and then put it up the best price home. So you're doing, you're doing a combination. It's yeah. like a. a Paid yep. Facebook targeting Correct. ad for, for, uh, okay. for business page for deal properties, yes. and then on your personal page, you're yep. doing the deal of the week for your sphere. Correct. Okay. Are you paying for any ad space at all on Instagram or, yep. or, or Facebook? Okay. Both. Both. So I do um, separate ads because each platform is a different. It needs to be different. You can't do the same ad on Facebook and on Instagram. They just don't work. It's a different audience, so you have to do it completely differently. Instagram, you're going to want to do a bunch of pictures of your. Uh, your house on there and then just have a really good story description in there. People want to have a story, they just don't want to see um, stats or anything. They want to know a little bit more about it. And as far as Instagram, I mean, sorry, Facebook, um, they, what I've noticed that works very well is um, maybe three to four pictures of the property itself. The best pictures, though, you don't want to have, um, unless you're targeting investors, then of course, then yes, that's going to give you a ton of investor clients. But um, when you're targeting people for just a regular house, um, it works very well if they're professional, high-quality photos and they have a few to go to. You don't want to give them too many photos because then what's the point of looking at more of it? And uh, always have like a little link on there. What I have on there is uh, my lender has a program called Listing Booster. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it. And what it does is uh, it creates a personalized website of the property, just like any other house would have its own website. And then I'll do a GoDaddy domain name of the address.com. 
like the listing that we're doing the grand opening is just the address.com and when you go to that link which is on the social media facebook and instagram they all go to the same place leads you there when they get there i they have to sign in to see any more information i've tried it where they don't sign in and it doesn't really do anything i don't get the leads they get the information they want and then they run away and you never see them again so um i just have to it gives you the option to be able to say sign in and they could either sign in with their um, Facebook or their Google account and because the leads are coming from Facebook it works perfectly because it says see more with Facebook and then they just click that little link and it automatically gives me all their Facebook information which is what Mark's probably getting in trouble for but it's uh, it gives me their name and email address and as well as sometimes if they had it public on their profile their phone number and so now I have a database of that when you're running an ad your phone's going off all day long of people who are just clicking it, just checking out the website because they don't know that they have to do this with happily. They don't think anything of it. They just click log in with Facebook and it, they don't know it's giving me all the information and it just sends it to me and now it's I have easy. it. It's easy. They feel like no harm foul. Just click on it. And One button. And they move on and you mm -hmm. capture their intel and you're going, you and your team are going after them. Yep. So then now they could be uh, emailed an invite to the open house. You could text them, you could call them and say, hey, I got your request and then uh, Send them a little personal email. Now I'm curious. Yeah. Now, as a Facebook user myself, and I'm sure a lot of you are as well, when you're using Listing Booster and you're getting this Facebook stuff, you're calling them, you're maybe inviting them via you know the, the social media platform to the open app. Mm -hmm. Are you adding them as, as friends? Are you inviting yes. them to follow your business page? I will look them up and add them as friends. Okay. A lot of times they will not accept it, but sometimes they do, and then they, um, I want to say out of let's say for example ten people. Uh, give you their lead and then you send them all their requests, maybe three of them will accept the friend request and maybe one of them will start interacting with your post every now and then. Okay. So now they are seeing you all the time. Maybe they won't work with you today, but maybe in five years from now, mm -hmm. from seeing you for five years, they'll call you and do something like that. But really, who cares if they buy in five years or 10 years? You're still yep. in business now, yep. right? Because when they like your stuff or comment on anything, their friends now see your post yep. because all of my posts are public. So anything that they do is now public on their page. And what I found out too is videos are great. I spend a lot of time editing my videos, even if you guys have seen my videos, and they do nothing. The high, high quality is works very well. You have to be high quality videos, but if you're spending a ton of time editing the videos, it works very well to make you look good if you're very consistent with it. But as far as an ad point of view, because um, you can see how long people watch your videos for, and it's not very long. Yeah. So um, they interact with pictures far better on ad set, at least. They still do the videos because they see everything that you're doing. The ones that are interested do watch the videos, but it's just a very small um, view rate. Got and it. I put a lot of effort into it. So, I so you do more photos now yep. than how you tricked out videos. Yeah, and I realized too that um, it takes you away, keeps you back from doing a lot because I was editing videos for hours and hours every single day. and it got to the point where I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to keep editing videos. It's not really doing anything. No so, turn. nope. So what I would do is just go live or do anything like that because who cares? It's already out there. You don't have to edit it because everyone's already seen it. So I don't care what I look like. I don't care what's on there. It's already done. So you're not downloading TikTok and making these dramatic Marvel Avengers type of videos anymore? Or Sometimes. If Sometimes. there's like something really good in or it's a listing, I'm going to do a high quality and edit the whole thing, of course. But if it's just for an everyday thing, previewing properties or um, doing anything like that, giving some tips, it's live. Because then I don't have to do anything again, it's already done. Yeah, and, and I think your audience, a lot of us, when it's live, they recognize it's from a cell phone. Mm -hmm. It's not from the CBS studios in Hollywood, right? It's, it's just you talking to the information. Yep. And I'll use a gimbal to make it look professional because, uh, That's great. sideways. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it looks super smooth the entire time, it looks professionally shot. Kathy, are you paying for any ad space on Facebook right now? Um, I, I do. Um, I actually am learning to to boost my lives yeah. through my social. My I have a social media coach that's super amazing. That I don't do. I don't do hardly. I don't do any photos. I don't believe in them. For me myself, my own, my best and and most looked at ones are all lives. So I don't do any. I don't. The other day, I actually posted a country, like the clubhouse um, property, and I was like, ooh, I gotta get that off because I'm really concerned about Facebook 
um, taking it off my, I had it on my personal page, so I transferred over to my business page. But be really careful because they can just rip you off and, and, and put you in jail for six months, and you won't have your personal page anymore. So back to the six months, back to my plans I have every single day, motivational Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's a new thing my, my um, coach and I, did. We, we worked out the last week, we, we, uh, we touched base. But lives are what the only way I get a, a really great interaction, respond to every single person. My coach is on there. She's like, you know, Kathy, do this, you know, do this. And she's really super, she's on it with me um, the, last, the last month or so. But lives are only where it's at. Photographs don't do anything. Videos don't do anything. Anything prepared, all authentic, 100% authentic. Gotcha. They see me call a bathroom a kitchen. They see me screw up. They see me like, yeah. They see me say some dumb things. But I wouldn't. When I cussed one time, the what's that? Okay, but I can't believe I. Cussed. I don't know where that came from. But then I had to do a retake, and I told everybody I cussed. But it, they want authentic. They want authentic lives to see what's going on. They love to see your business. See Kathy, the human they love that. <laughs> that's it. So it's only lives. Okay. That's that's where it's, it's at for me. Crazy you are, the better. It's more yeah, we're, we're we're both crazy. We've decided yeah. that. Two, two last quick questions, and we're going to open up to the audience for Q&A. So think about your questions right now, okay? Two quick questions. We'll go rapid fire. Best piece of new technology in the past 12 months that you've implemented into your business that's converting for commission checks right now? Best new piece of technology you've implemented in the past 12 months? Can you think of anything? Mm -hmm. my, my camera and my, what's it called? What's it, what's Gimbal. It, yeah, that thing. I love it. <laughs> I got to use it, but I, I haven't been using it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my phone, obviously, that's the number one thing. But um, I would say for a new technology that I just got that I didn't have before, I had an old iPad that I barely used because it didn't allow me to update it anymore. So I just bought the best, biggest iPad that they could have with a pen, and it's just changed everything. It impresses everyone when I'm with them because I have everything we're going to be seeing on um, iBooks, and it's just a PDF format on there, and you can write on the MLS sheet, and you can see all the pictures, and it's just shown there. What I'm going to also be introducing is the digital signatures on the iPad. Mm -hmm. So no more having to have paper or anything like that. So everything's already on there as template. So yeah. just click and sign. DocuSign, mm -hmm. digital signature, or I annotate? Which one are you using for those digital signatures? I use um, digital ink, but I, I like DocuSign a lot better. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it just never gives me problems with DocuSign. Right. Yeah, okay. Good deal, right? Why digital ink? They always have problems. Always. Well, it's free, but there's always issues. Yeah. Right? Um, use that Berkshire Hathaway 30% discount yeah. when you're buying DocuSign, because if you don't get the discount, really? Yeah. Come on. Best new piece of technology you've implemented in the past 12 months, Brandon? The iPhone 10, right? That's one. Okay. And then the iPad, I upgraded mm -hmm. the 11 inch also. So, that's so hardware. Right. Hardware. It's hardware. Hardware. Yep. Yeah, it's and I was actually, yeah. I, meant to, I said it said camera, but I meant to say my tripod and my all my my um all my lights and stuff, my whole setup in my office. Okay. It's uh, I love it. A mini, mini it studio. It makes me feel good. Yeah. Mini studio. Yeah. It's all about lighting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my music. Like I blast. Like I have a two um I have two computers, a double screen, on one side of my office, and I blast it. So I get going and dancing and going crazy and have fun and I just and I turn on my camera and go, and it just it's because people want to have see have fun have a good time sure no sure. business like just have fun. Last question before we open it up to the audience. Last question, Brandon. Every agent out here wants to know what do you do to keep yourself motivated when you're in a sales slump and you just got rejected something didn't go your way. What do you do to stay motivated? Well, actually, the no doesn't really bother me anymore. Uh, when I first started, you know, when I had Toastmaster with Bruce, and I told him how many no's I get from door knocking, right? And he, he gave me a statistics, and then it came out like for about 20 doors or so. I thought I knocked, I will get, you know, an appointment, and then, you know, two, uh, like about 50 doors, I will get a listing, and about 100 doors, I will get like a, a closing. And then I, I factored that into how much that per listing, a commission that I got, it's about 15000 or so. So Bruce said, hey, that's about $75 per no. Mm -hmm. So that is actually, that's my motivation. And I always remember that uh, at the beginning of my career, that every no means some money, yes. whatever that yes. is worth to you. So that doesn't stop me. And I have so many leads that I, I continue to generate. I don't have enough time to call leads back. 
So that's uh, how much leads I have that, you know, it just nicks, right? So you're so busy with business, you don't have time to get... I don't have time to go back to the sphere of influence. I have my team do it. It's like a new, new leads that I, I just need to go through and say, okay, this is a good prospect. I want to work with this prospect. You know, nine out of ten leads are not good leads anyway. So, and, uh, and one day I can probably go over like 40 leads and probably I, I, I can't call them all. So the next day just pile up. I don't care about another no. Okay. There's some yeses in there. Doesn't care about another no. What do you do? Keep yourself motivated when everything, all the real estate gods are against you and you're like down in the dumps, doom and gloom. What do you do to pick yourself up and forge forward? A lot of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke too. Um, basically, uh, it's just em <laughs> em embarrassment, I guess. It's just I don't want to be embarrassed by not doing a really good job and not being uh, posting stuff. Because if I don't post something one day, I, I feel bad that People, everyone, all my followers think, he didn't work that day, he didn't do anything. And which stops me sometimes from doing uh, like my 10 miles. If I took a day off one day, I don't want to do it in the middle of the day and post in the middle of the day because then people are thinking, he didn't work today, he just went through 10 miles in the middle of the day. So I, it's all strategically planned is when I do everything. And, uh, but basically it's just a fear of embarrassment and I really don't care what anyone thinks when I, how I talk. I just say whatever's in my mouth, I have no filter. A lot of times, I'm, for some reason, I have a filter tonight, but uh, I'm toning it down a lot. I tone it down a lot. <laughs> for those of you guys that know me, I'm very crazy and wild. And uh, not only that kind, but more that kind. Yeah, we just, and and uh, just basically just wanting, you know, just to, wanting to post and do stuff. Just let people know that's really why I do it. Just embarrassment. I don't want people to think I'm not doing something or not the best. Okay. That's it. Kathy, what are you doing? You're down in the dumps. I tell everybody. You tell everybody? Yeah. Tell everybody. And they just go, they just lift me up and then, <laughs> yeah, I tell everybody and then they just like, my people around me, I just like, I use them for energy. I get on podcasts, I go, I'll get on, I'll get on ferry, I'll get on my women's um, girls guide to outrageous real estate, which I'm really, really super active with. I'll get on my Cheyenne Lake, it was she's like, we interact together. I can just call them and say, can you believe this would happen now? Next, and then they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, totally. You know, it's, but it's back and forth. It's being authentic with everybody. Everyone can lift you up. There's energy everywhere. So I just take the energy and just, and just use it. Just all the good energy, I just pull and I and, and, uh, enhance it. Sounds like you push that negative energy out. Yeah. And all those people you surround yeah. yourself with pull back positive energy into Yes. You. That's, yeah. that's wonderful. So, these three superstars are now, are you guys ready to take some of their questions? Sure. Yeah? So here's what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen. Raise your hand, okay? We'll call go from left to right. Fair enough? So we can keep it under control. So, we'll start on this side of the room. Any questions for all three superstars or an individual? Nothing. Yes, sir, in the back was first. Yes, uh, I asked Brandon in uh, insert about Craigslist, so we need to know uh, which platform we're voting Craigslist. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll buyers. show you a link if oh, you. Sorry. I'll give you my business card, or you can write down my email. I'll send you a link of my my posting. It's mainly for marketing. I mean, you will get a lot of fire, you just have to filter them. And you just have to have a script that go with it, I can share that script with you too. Brandon, could you post that link in the closed rethink members group so yeah. all of us? So you can see that. Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. And then, sorry, you had a question back here. Yes, uh, for Brandon again. Um, you're talking about a lot of your work is with investors. Yes. How do you find a good investor? Well, like, from, I started out posting, you know, cheap old real estate right and you know that investors are looking for cheap old real estate like over the years i probably go through about over 200 they call so-called investor but it comes down to about like i'll say a dozen or so that i work on a daily basis with so when, when they consider themselves investor there's like newbies and there's professional when i say newbies like they try to get into their first deal and then there's professionals that have a team of 20 contractors and they're flipping three or four homes a, a month. So I work with a range of those guys. 
And once you they're comfortable with you, like I, I, I'm the San Gabriel area, there's three investors that will only use me. And every time when there's a, a property that comes up in San Gabriel area, they'll call me, they'll go ask me to go and take pictures, give a property report. I'll give them all the nitty gritty. They don't have to drive out there. And I give them an evaluation. And that's what I do. And over time, you know, I build the relationship. Like I've been doing this for 10 years, mainly with investors. So that's why 50% of my business involve investors. Very good. Uh, Paul, you got a question? Yeah, I guess this will be more for Dusty. I see you do a lot of stories on Instagram. What do you think are the, the differences between what you get from a story compared to a post, and what makes you choose one platform over another? So as far as posts, that's stuff that's there forever, and I mainly do that for things that I want there forever. And uh, so I post listings or any success things or just something that looks good there because it doesn't that's where people are gonna interact with more, but as far as stories, that's stuff that only lasts for 24 hours that I don't, I don't think people won't care about it in two weeks when I sell the house, it's already done. So, but what I do on stories is there's a part called highlights. And if it's a really good story, I'll add that to a particular highlight section where I have one section for my uh, 10 miles a day, 800 miles that I'm doing. And I'll have another section for staging that I do, another section for grand openings, another section where they, stuff that I'm doing, stuff like this. And uh, it's just different sections, and that's where I put my stories. And people interact with it there. You can have questions on there where they can vote, ask you questions, interact with it more, swipe up and DM you. And mainly I get more interaction with the stories because people are swiping through it. They see one, two, three, four, five of your stories in a row versus a post, they'll see you while they're scrolling up and see 20 other people around you. Very good. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Any other questions on this side of the room? No questions. This side of the room, any questions over here? Jerry? You had some question earlier, yeah? My question earlier when you were uh, advertising, were you doing institutional advertising, like the bus benches, or were you doing a direct action ad? And does that mean why you weren't getting a response? Were you just trying to build your name? You're trying to get calls and clients. When we went back in the beginning, you were talking about your advertising, how much you spent. So in the beginning, I was doing whatever, I was gullible, and I would sign up for anything that came to me. And I didn't know um, about anything back then, so I would just pay for it. If someone asked me, say, hey, you should do this, I'd be like, okay. If they tell you it works, and I believed it. So it was, uh, the, I would do postcards, I would do flyers, pass out, I would make custom business cards for the, pop, the property. Um, I would do uh, the penny saver ads, I would do the newspaper, sometimes you know you pay for that to be that agent up there on our Brookshire, it was Prudential at the time, as uh, I don't remember what it was called. Um, I would do that, which didn't result in anything for me, but if you're consistent enough, I guess it will. But mainly it's just consistency is what gives me the business for whatever I'm doing. Stuff that I've done for four or five months never worked. Stuff that I've been doing for a year to two years, that it's starting to work now. You know, and it's just mainly, um, that's what works for me. The way I farm is I don't do a specific geographical farm. I farm around a listing. And I'll hit that listing very, very hard when I have it. So it just makes such a wow factor because they, someone's maybe been in that farm for 10, 20, 40 years and uh, everyone knows them. And I'll come in and do uh, um, my thing and it's just different. And it's, oh, it's just, I think it's very impressive. So they like it and they want to come to my event and see what it's about. And maybe down the line they'll come by. I don't know why you guys are laughing, but it's making me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's because there's, there's a story going on, but I won't talk about it. And, and uh, it, just, it just works. It's just doing, if you have something to advertise, a specific thing, it works. If you're just advertising yourself, it's not really going to work as much as a listing. You have to add some sort of value to them, and um, because people either want something that is valuable to them, teaches them something, makes them feel good about themselves in some sort of way, or is entertaining. Anything besides that is just noise, and that basically that's where I just learned that it just has to be one of those things. I don't know if that answered your question because I feel like I said a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on this side of the room? Cool. Uh, coach and criteria for a social media coach. How'd you find that? Um, and and the coaching question for everybody. 
Yeah, um, Crystal Lindsay is my, my coach. I found her through, um, through what, was it a realtor convention in Long Beach? And um, I Im immediately, expo. So I immediately made friends with her. She was overwhelmed and I didn't think she didn't have, she ever had a helper that didn't show up that day. So I was like, I drew off my stuff, threw off my stuff. Mm -hmm. I threw down my bags, that was weird. Threw down my bags and then I like, I jumped in to take people's name, names and numbers for her. And then she's like, oh my gosh. And so we, all of a sudden we like, we clicked because like her personality, she had a presentation and I loved it. And so I hired her and I love her. She's so authentic. She's who I want to be. Yeah. Crystal Lindsay. Is anybody else on the panel coaching right now? Yes. Who are you coaching right now? I'm actually, I follow uh, Craig Proctor. I don't know you guys heard about Craig Proctor uh, for the last five years. And I did a twist with his guarantee program with the Guarantee Soap program. So I actually merged those two uh, sort of programs together to make it uniquely my program. Okay. So I, every Tuesday and Thursday, we have morning calls. So whatever question, open question. I don't know if you've heard about, you know, uh, big agents around here that market like your home sold or will buy it. That's, that's basically Craig Proctor. Mm -hmm. And I've used the MAP program to actually support that. That's what you're doing professional coaching right now. So I don't have a coach that I call or anything calls me or anything like that. What I did have is I follow uh, two people on social media and I did pay for one of their programs for thousands of dollars <coughs> just to be able to have access to their videos. And they are Grant Cardone, which is a extremely good salesman. Yep. Mm -hmm. 10 x growth plan is in like one day or two days. I'm not going to it, but it's, it's in a few days. Show me the socks. Show me the uh, socks. Show me the socks right here. <laughs> don't be a little bit. Don't be a little... I, just, I said it. I don't have a filter. <laughs> and uh, um, so that's one person. He's a very good uh, salesman. I just believe it. He's very aggressive, which uh, yeah. when I first started listening to him was back in, um, I want to say the end of 2016, going into 2017. I listened to him for maybe uh, less than a month. And that first month, I took four listings in like a week, just using his lines. It just gave me like some sort of brand new confidence that I didn't have. And uh, when I went up to up against people that are negotiating with sellers or buyers, I just knew exactly what to say from just a little couple of lines, and which is repeat what they say and then make them feel good about themselves, I guess. And just mirror. I learned how to like change my personality and be able to match pretty much almost anyone. But not really, but just, you know, in my way. And uh, the other person is Gary V, G Gary Vaynerchuk. And uh, uh, you used to like him. I or still no, love him. I'm a girl. You, you I'm a girl, Gary V. Yeah. You liked him when I liked Grant Cardone, and you didn't like Grant Cardone. No. I, I hated no. Gary. And then, because I, I, yeah, I thought he was really annoying. And then I kept watching it, and then I started really liking it. Now I like him more than Grant. And, uh, right. Yeah. Now I don't even watch Reddit as much anymore. But basically, Gary D is a social media expert. Yeah. Probably, you know, I would say the number one. Did you know like that Vayner Media runs social media for Berkshire Hathaway yeah. services? I saw that, yeah. I saw Gino mm -hmm. meeting with yeah. him multiple times. Yeah. 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 Yep. And I would say he's the modern day madman, if whoever's seen the show. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's yeah. just really good. Without the, without the yeah. cocktails. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think he's the hardest worker I've ever seen in my life, and he just if you just see his videos, it's just more work than I've ever done in one day in like a whole year. It's not, but you know, it just seems that way. He doesn't have a filter either. Yeah, no filter either. Yeah. That's why I was okay with it right there, because if he does it, I can do it. <laughs> Any other questions on this side of the room? Nothing? Let's give these, ladies and gentlemen, Up off that? Yes. I hope that you did. So this is something that happens every year within the Rethink Local Chapter, ladies and gents. Uh, for those of you who are interested in joining the chapter and really finding out what we're about, how we coach you up, how we can help you build your business from scratch, our next meeting will be at the Ontario branch, Nathan. We're going to be at Ontario Thursday, February 28th. As always, the last Thursday of the month from 6 to 8 p.m. And our topic, we're going to talk about building teams. That's what we're gonna do. Talk about building teams, putting an assistant in place, putting an ISA in place, 
a buyer's agent. When it's time for you, we'll show you what you need. Okay, that's Ontario, February 28th. I appreciate all of you coming out tonight. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you.